System Manager for AHM, the Channels page provides access to the processing parameters of the channels available. The second tab displays configurable zones. Zone signal flow is displayed horizontally from left to right with all processing functions always available on every zone. In order a zone number and name, source selector, priority inputs, cross point routing, insert point, parametric EQ, graphic EQ or parametric EQ, compressor, delay, ambient noise compensation, level, speaker processing, outputs and limiters. Notice the white line running over the top of some of the processing. This indicates that this processing is bypassed and the signal is not affected by it. If for example I switch the compressor on, the signal now goes in and out of that part of the signal chain. The source selector allows one of 20 sources to be recalled to the selected zone from an external IP controller, TCP control or the Allen & Heath custom control app. Sources can be an input channel or a preset that can be assigned to the relevant zone. For example, Zone 1 might be a lobby area and by pushing and turning the IP controller in that room, I can select the input channel going to that room. I could also turn to Source Select a preset which could launch a pre-recorded message. Note that any input or group routed to the selected zone but not selected as a member of the source selector will not be affected by the selector. A priority input will trigger the ducking of all other inputs to the zone once a threshold is exceeded. Up to two priority inputs can be specified per zone, with priority input 1 having priority over priority input 2. Click a priority input drop-down to see the list of available inputs and select an input to assign it to a priority input. Any inputs assigned as a priority input should be routed to the zone as normal and should not be muted. Click Configure to access the settings for the priority input. Threshold sets the level at which the priority input triggers ducking of all other inputs to the zone. The meter on the left lines up with the graph and shows the signal at the input to the gate. Depth sets how much ducking is applied to the other signals in the zone when the threshold is exceeded. Release sets how long it takes to the ducker to return to normal levels. Note that these settings apply to the input and are not zone specific. If the same priority input is used in multiple zones, the settings apply to all instances of the priority input. Paging can be used in conjunction with priority inputs to enable ducking of other inputs to the zones when paging is active. More on paging in a dedicated paging video. In the cross point routing page, the inputs and zones assigned to this zone are displayed. The send level of each input or zone to the selected zone can be adjusted and muted. By holding shift while moving the fader, Adjustments can be made in 5 dB increments. Click on Edit Routing to configure the assigned inputs and zones to the selected zone. There is an insert point in the signal chain before EQ and compression. This might be used to insert external processing via an analog or digital external I.O. or for inserting processing from the optional card slot on AHM. There's an 8-band parametric EQ on every single zone, and you can choose the slope of each band individually from the usual list of high pass, low pass, high shelf, low shelf, bell, and also a constant Q bell. There's a second EQ processor in the signal chain of every zone that can be either a 28-band graphic EQ or a second 8-band parametric EQ. The graphic EQ has built-in real-time analysis with frequency peak LEDs at the top of each individual band. Each zone has a compressor that can be peak or RMS, with full controls including soft or hard knee. The compressor can also be triggered from an external sidechain source, which could be an input or a zone. Each zone has its own delay with a maximum value of 683 milliseconds, which can be set in milliseconds, meters, feet and samples, and even includes temperature compensation for adjusting delay values based in distance. 
Each zone has ambient noise compensation. Ambient noise compensation would automatically manage the output gain of the selected zone based on the level of the ambient noise. So, if the ambient noise goes up, so does the zone. And if the ambient noise goes down, so will the zone, meaning the signal level is always relevant to the ambient level. More on this in the ambient noise compensation video. The level fader is the master level for this zone, and in this window you can also mute and unmute this zone. Each zone can have up to four bands of speaker processing in its signal chain. Each band has a crossover, EQ, delay and limiting. More details on this in the speaker processing specific video. In the output tab you can route the physical output of the selected zone. If you have multiple bands of speaker processing, the outputs for each band can be assigned here as well. The zone has a brick wall limiter with simple settings of attack, release and threshold with a handy histogram over 10 seconds to monitor activity. Limiters for each speaker processing band are displayed here too.